All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Corey. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. As the disclaimer goes, I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and do not invest in anything you are not willing to lose or hold for a very long time. And without further ado, let's get into today's news. So it looks like uh, we are breaking out of our triangle for the daily to the upside. We are about four to five percent up for the day, which is great. Love to see that we're out of that 17 cents area, moving into the 20 cent area, hopefully today I would really like to see that we deserve that kind of a move to the upside um, stock markets today looking good it looks like the Dow futures are poised for a 700 to 800 point rise again markets are very volatile so who knows um, but it looks like the Fed has now started buying up uh, the ETFs bonds and shares so this looks like a move by the Fed rather than the sentiment of the general public to me First thing that I want to show you today is a tweet by Kevin Cage. A um, This was sent to him, and I just thought it was uh, some interesting news, so I figured uh, you guys should see this as well. So Ripple is a crypto. And, well, if you, if you look at the planning and the design and the competition, it's fluid right now. You know, there's competition over what the design will be. It was very interesting. I won't bore you with all the details, but I had an incredible experience in Denmark a year ago, and I was trying to figure out what's going on in Denmark. Um, they had uh, one of the tech firms in Denmark was being paid by the U.S. Navy to come up with a chip that could be implanted in the human body that would integrate with Ripple. Yeah. So Ripple is a crypto, and uh, it's one that's gotten a lot of promotion from the American establishment in my experience, just my impression. So why is the U.S. Navy paying a, 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 a Danish tech company to come up with an implantable chip that will integrate with Ripple? That's a good question. Definitely a good question. Um, nobody knows, but I will link the original video into the uh, description of this video. So you guys can take a look at the uh, the full 26 minute clip or the full interview. This is at the 26 minute uh, mark. So then they he put down this article about uh, buy chip. I just actually I'm noticing this now. So this was supposed to tie into the this right here buy chip at buy chip DK announcement buy chip microchip implant is now implementing Ripple payment systems in the product. This means that the microchip owners will not be needing to connect their microchip to their bank accounts anymore. They can connect it right to the Ripple ledger. So um, there is some interesting truth to this somehow. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Moving on, we've got roses on the moon at roses on the moon. So if this picture is a picture of all of the satellites that are above the globe moving around in their paths and their flight paths and everything um, and so I thought this picture was interesting somewhat fake and so I wanted to find where I could find that and here it is this is actually the celestial tracker I'm moving this with my mouse now um, you can actually see each one of these dots is a is a satellite owned by somebody so uh, if you really don't think you're moving into the digital economy, uh, just look at um, how many satellites are floating above your head right now that could be connected to your network, your internet, around our globe. So it's pretty interesting. All right, we've got X. Goldman Sachs executive shifts portfolio to Bitcoin, warns worst insolvency event in history is coming. So Raul, Raul Paul, a former Europe hedge fund sales lead at Goldman Sachs, is preparing for the financial system to enter a massive world of hurt. Uh, he is quoted here saying, I think the balance of probabilities are that this is a much longer event in terms of the economic impacts, and I think it's going to be the largest insolvency event in all history. This is a generational change. What it does is the younger generation is going to look upon everything differently forever because of this. Uh, they will look upon, with some suspicion, the pension system, which is going to fail in this. So he believes that through this, the pension system is going to fail as well. They're going to look across securities markets in ways that they think this is just not for me. So we're not going to trust the securities markets. So this guy from Goldman Sachs is basically saying, you know, the pension plan, securities, everything that you know as traditional is just going to fall apart. And everybody who's young enough to understand that we were screwed over in the 2008 market crisis 
Uh, they're not going to look towards these traditional financial systems. We're going to start looking for something new and improved to put our money. Of the liquid net cash that I have available, my allocation that I want to be in for the next 12 months probably, maybe longer, this guy is going 25% Bitcoin, 25% gold, 25% cash, and 25% trading opportunities. Um, so he's not holding his money in the stock market. Um, so if you're going to take any advice from somebody who's not a financial advisor, maybe you should take some advice from a guy who works directly for the hedge fund sales lead at Goldman Sachs, to, uh, taking his money out of the markets because he feels everything is going to fail and he's putting his money into crypto. All right, Japan to declare a state of emergency on April 7th. All right, so this is going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow, Japan is going to come out and declare a state of emergency. Um, which is apparently against their constitution to force people to stay inside. So they're looking at um, some civil situations that might occur due to the fact that they're going to force their citizens to stay inside against the constitutional rights. Um, but anything in you know to get health across, apparently. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to read is... Um, Abe has been criticized for not having already declared an emergency, a hesitance thought by many to stem from a strong desire to hold the Olympics this summer in Tokyo, as was originally planned. The International Olympic Committee decided in late March to postpone the Games to 2021 after consulting with the Prime Minister and others. So they decided to postpone the Olympics until 2021. Um, a lot of people have been talking about this XRP timeline, and one of the things that we were expecting is that the um, cryptocurrency XRP was going to be used as a uh, mode of exchange for all international visitors to the Olympics. They wanted to roll it out as a new system that could help people um, transfer money and spend money at the Olympic Games using the XRP ledger. Um, at the Tokyo Olympics, a lot of people will come to Japan. They will be shopping and traveling around, and they will be able to use XRP in a secure way, protected by a platform like Elliptic. So they were going, this is from the, a direct quote from the executive officer for overseas investment at SBI. And we do know that SBI is working with XRP. Uh, Yoshita Yoshitako, Yoshitako, somebody, Nakamoto, I don't know. I messed up that name. Um, but he is the CEO of SBI VC and SBI and um, they're going to be using, they wanted to use XRP during the games. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, it is an older article, uh, but it does tie into the uh, Japan Olympic Games being canceled. Moving on, uh, we've got some more talk about CBDC development for China. They have been talking about this for a long time, um, and they continue to uh, say that they're going to be making new changes and continue developing their token. The top priority is to enhance the top-level system design, unswerver, unswervingly advance the research and development of CBDC, systematically promote and reform of cash issuance and return systems and accelerate the promotion of banknote processing business, issuance of bank guards and issuance funds. So uh, just more top level uh, securities that they're putting on, more ways to track their money, more ways to figure out who's holding their money. Um, again, that was supposed to roll out uh, this past January, then April 1st, but we're still in April. April has a little way to go now. so. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe the, by the end of April, we'll see China finally rolling out that uh, CBDC they keep talking about. All right. XRP picks up support from Republican congressional candidate. Unlike many XRP detractors, Republican congressional candidate David Gokstein is certain that the third largest cryptocurrency has legitimate use cases. And um, they're pulling this all from a tweet from him that says XRP is not useless. What I get from this is almost nothing except for the fact that, thank goodness, that XRP is on the doorstep of politicians. The big guys who are in control of um, making the decisions on who's allowed to use what in terms of money and who's allowed to do what, uh, at least they have this crypto on their mind. All right, I'm also going to put this into the 
description of the video. I'll put the link in the description so you can check this out. I think I'm also going to put this in the description of the video so you guys can take a look at this visualization and play with it yourselves. Um, but this is a 2020 Q1 unofficial XRP ODL analysis and report. Um, and it goes in depth about how the guy did the math in order to figure out all these numbers and what's going on. It is a very good read. I'm going to let you guys read it all on your own. Um, but it is a great piece of information. So please check in the description of this video to get the link for the unofficial XRP ODL analysis report and see how um, ODL has uh, started to kick off and may start affecting the price of XRP. Okay, uh, last couple things that I've got is the Everest network right here is working with BRI remittance to enable faster cross-border payments for Indonesia Europe corridor. Um, if you're not paying attention, there will be competition in this space. There is always going to be new competition trying to get into the remittance and settlement market. So here is a small company working with BRI remittance to try to get their piece of remittance uh, through Indonesia and Europe corridor. These guys obviously not as um, important or far along as Ripple's XRP, but nonetheless, competition does pop out. And especially in these crisis times when we're all screaming, oh, there's a liquidity crisis, there's a liquidity crisis, and still not turning our heads to um, fintech companies like Ripple and XRP who are literally set up to solve this situation. Um, they're gonna leave some space open for competition to start moving in. Um, so hopefully these guys are uh, not anything to worry about. I don't think they are. I haven't seen or heard of anybody's name here, so or seen them in Washington, which is where Ripple and XRP are. The last thing that I want to show you is a an article from Zero Hedge. It's simple. Um, we've been talking about a lot of this conspiracy and uh, new world order stuff. You know, the Bush administration, the NWO, all that nonsense um well what is it what are, what are we trying to break down well maybe we were in the new world order maybe that world order was the dollar bill and and all of the nonsense that we were conducting overseas with wars with with the swift system and maybe we're trying to break that down into um, a more decentralized world order for the people and what do we have to do to do that well we have to get rid of these central banks um terminate the BIS, the World Bank, the IMF, and the European Central Bank, the EU, NATO. That is what we need to get rid of. This is what um, apparently, you know, POTUS and, uh, and Putin are, are trying to put together. So that's the conspiracy side of it. And I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, please subscribe. Please like the channel. Uh, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful day.